Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Happy Wednesday to all of you. And a quick shout out to my newest patron, Emma J. Thanks for choosing to support the channel. Real quick, from yesterday, we covered this newsletter from Lynn Alden, where she said that US equities currently represent about 200% of United States GDP, which would be an all time high. There were some comments of people saying that this is just because some of the biggest US companies are now more global than they were in years past. But just to be fair to Lynn Alden, I wanted to share what she said later in the newsletter. Some people assume that this increase in market cap to GDP is just because companies are selling more products like iPhones abroad. However, the opposite is true. US companies have a slightly lower percentage of the revenue coming from outside the US today when the market cap is 200% of GDP than when they did 10 years ago when the market cap was 90% of GDP. So it's not as though the US market simply became more global during that time. She continues, instead, the increase in stock prices are primarily due to higher domestic corporate earnings and especially from higher valuations on those earnings rather than international expansion. So I just wanted to be fair to Lynn and provide more context from her as some people had commented on that specifically. In terms of VIN decoding to find out where these new Teslas will actually be coming from, if you look at the 11th digit in the VIN, it's going to be A, B, C, or F, Austin, Berlin, China, or Fremont. Some fun news here for everybody who likes to stylize and differentiate their vehicles. Koenigsegg, the Swedish hypercar company, is making aftermarket parts for Tesla. A new lineup of carbon parts from Unplugged Performance bring more than an extra dash of splash. They're manufactured by none other than Koenigsegg. This collaboration is between Unplugged Performance and Koenigsegg Advanced Manufacturing, and they're going to start with carbon fiber spoilers for the Model 3, Y, S, and X, as well as a wider front fender and a high downforce spoiler for the Model 3 specifically. More parts are promised later this year. The regular spoilers for the Model 3 and Y will set you back about $1,745 a piece. The long tail spoilers for the Model S and X will cost you $2,495. And for the Ascension R front fenders, that'll set you back $8,845. For some context, Koenigsegg makes things like this. The CEO of Unplugged Performance said, we're grateful to partner with the best engineers and factories in the world who share in our vision and mission. Koenigsegg is an iconoclastic global leader in innovation and hypercar grade manufacturing. Together with Koenigsegg, we want to excite Tesla owners and to contribute towards an exciting electric future for the car culture we love. Automotive News Europe went ahead and put Troy Tesla's estimates for Tesla deliveries in the United States on the list that Reuters had previously left out. So luxury top 10, Tesla number two through November of 2021. Even if Tesla's December data doesn't push them into the number one spot, it's pretty likely if things continue trending in this direction, they'll take that number one luxury spot in 2022, which for the last decade has mostly been held by BMW or Mercedes. Giga Berlin water supply update, the government doesn't think there's a problem. The Brandenburg government does not see the drinking water in the region around the Tesla factory in Grunheide in danger. It's just about the question of how this lawsuit will end. The state government does not see the drinking water supply of 170,000 people in the catchment area of the WSC and the water supply of Tesla as being at risk. Ultimately, however, it depends on the application that is made in the oral hearing. It is scheduled for February 11th. Remember, this is separate from the final approval for Giga Berlin, two separate issues. I wanted to take a moment to comment on this as it has been dominating the Tesla news headlines today. First felony charges filed for fatal Tesla autopilot crash. This was an autopilot related accident back in 2019 and unfortunately two people were killed in the accident. But the real story here and the unfortunate sad reality is this is a case of driver inattentiveness. Autopilot back in 2019 had nothing for traffic lights or stop lights. It's just a level two system. The driver is still fully responsible and it's a pretty simple case of the driver running a red light, not paying attention when they should have been. Once again, autopilot is not FSD. In my opinion, this story would be very comparable to any car getting in an accident while it was using regular cruise control. So just wanted to add some context here. As like I said, it was dominating the Tesla headlines, but it's not really a Tesla autopilot malfunction. 
as it wasn't built to stop something like that at the time. Moving on, Elon said Tesla AI might play a role in AGI or artificial general intelligence, given that it trains against the outside world, especially with the advent of Optimus. The difference, just think AI is more narrow, more task driven, task specific, where AGI is more general and it's the machine learning to think and reason and do those things on its own. And to drive the point home, here is a chart. Go ahead and pause if you wanna read through. Just wanna point out that AGI is still up for debate if this is even possible for machines to learn certain things and do things on their own rather than the task driven AI. And right here where it says must consistently pass the Turing test, if you're not familiar, just think of it like this. If I'm sitting here and behind me there's a computer and a person and I'm asking both of them questions, if I can't reliably pick which one is the machine or the computer answering the questions, that means it has reliably passed the Turing test, which would mean that computer has the ability to demonstrate intelligent behavior indistinguishable from that of a human. In response to Tesla Raj saying FSD is now 12K and talking about subscription might be an easier pill to swallow, Elon said people do not yet understand how valuable an autonomous vehicle will be. We finally get an update from the Monroe team. Hello boys and girls, today we begin the teardown of the Model S Plaid. We will upload videos of the teardown ASAP, so please continue to be patient. We appreciate all your support and are very grateful to everyone who helped fund the purchase of the car. Now, in case you're impatient, engineering on YouTube has done some really good, very involved deep dive type videos into the Plaid and some other Tesla components. This one specifically, they take a look at the battery. I'll link it below, but I wanted to play you a quick clip of this video. In between the two rows of 18650s here. Yes, these are 18650s. It's really easy to see the diameter of them. I've done calculations and this is 22 serial rows of 72 cells wide. So there are five of these modules. That's a total of 7920 cells for the whole pack. 110 total cells in series. The coolant manifold runs down the entire length of the passenger side. There's nothing, nothing coolant related on the other side. We have the elastomeric poppet vents for venting uh, gas pressure if it were to ever develop in the pack, but not allowing water into the pack. Inside here, we have the, the current collectors that join the top of the cells. Um, they come out and are folded over and attached to the circuit board here. So these function as the cell taps so that the BMS ICs here can sense and balance. And this is the same arrangement as used in the 3Y. There's an isolated uh, bus here that's twisted pair, single twisted pair, comes out of the BMS computer in here, goes through chip one, through another galvanic isolation transformer, chip two, transformer, and so on. It goes all the way down like that in a daisy chain. And if the chain is broken anywhere, the BMS can read the state from the other end. So it's got some redundancy. A few updates from Alex Potter at Piper Sandler, reiterating overweight and $1,300 Tesla price target. He's now expecting Tesla to deliver 1.53 million units this year, but he did note Tesla should theoretically have enough capacity to exceed our upwardly revised estimate. But China's zero COVID policy could threaten operations in Shanghai, so we're trying to keep a level head. I liked this line where he said he expects Tesla to continue its assault on vehicle markets worldwide as the EV Titan continues to gain market share from traditional car makers. And by our estimate, Tesla now controls about 15% of the luxury vehicle market in the United States, and this is about 11% in China. Tesla's share of the overall auto market is now around two to two and a half percent in all three major global auto markets, but Tesla's long-term plans call for perhaps a 10X this level of sales. And check this out. Investors often ask us whether demand for competing EVs might sap Tesla's sales, but in our view, Tesla's market share is limited only by the company's own production capacity, and if 2022 goes as planned, capacity will soon get a big boost. Speaking of deliveries for this year, Koguan Leo said, we couldn't help but hoping Tesla will boldly guide analysts on January 26, the Q4 call, that it expects over 1.6 million deliveries with margin above 30% this year, destroy FUD and make Johnson bite the dusk, or maybe dust, Tesla bulls cheer. Essentially what he's saying here is he wants Elon to come out and raise the guidance, saying that they're expecting over 1.6 million to be delivered this year. 
I personally prefer Tesla plays the sandbagging approach, have the expectations low, and then Tesla beats on the upside. In my view, there's really no downside to sandbagging. In the event there are unexpected challenges or setbacks, you have more room for error, more wiggle room on the downside, and if things go well, then great, you exceed expectations, if not crush them. But to finish Koguan's point, he said, I know that is precisely why we try to persuade Zach to reassure institutional and retail investors during this challenging macro environment to try to discount encourage hedge funds to dump Tesla to trade by selling high and buying back low. We are long-term investors. It's decent in theory. In my opinion, hedge funds are going to do what they've always done. They buy, they sell, they trade. That's what they're paid to do. And they also have a ton of portfolio objectives and requirements and fiduciary responsibilities that individual shareholders just don't have. And just a quick reminder, I know we all love to get into the weeds and debate, is Tesla going to do 1.7 or 1.9? Just wanna be clear, whether they do 1.5 or 2 million this year, five years from now, it's really not gonna be that impactful. Sure, short term, it'll change some estimates and earnings and all of that, but as long as Tesla is growing roughly 50% every year for the next few years, it's all good and going according to plan. We might get a new feature heading to Europe. Somebody asked, Europe FSD isn't available, but it would be interesting if we could practice with the safety score, asking if Elon agrees. And he said, okay. So it seems like you might get the FSD safety score even in places where the FSD is not yet available. So everyone out there with basic autopilot might be able to see your safety score coming soon. Last up today, you gotta love this. Holmar shared a 40 minute drive from his friend's house to the Tesla competitor Green Hill Software offices and then to Tesla Palo Alto with zero takeovers. According to Real Dan O'Dowd, FSD beta will crash and kill you every 36 minutes. If he's not lying, how am I still alive? Elon said sheer luck. That'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.